All right, so the next one is freedom. Freedom brings happiness. Very important uh, to have this freedom effect in there. Somebody discovered it in the World Value Survey data that, that those of us operating in the early days hadn't glommed on to this yet, that there, do you have freedom to make life choices, important life choices, and on a, on a, on a fair scale. And a, you, once we put it in, it, turned, it just rang the gong. It turned out to be as important as anything. It didn't affect any of the other effects. It just came through very strongly. And guess what? Uh, guess where the top country in the world is in that? I can only imagine. Denmark? <laughs> see, well, you see, that that's then is a bit of an antidote to the people who say it's all about the Fraser Institute's economic freedom index. It's what you're able to do in the marketplace and so on. It isn't about that. This is, of course, these individuals answering it. You say, why should that be in Denmark? People say, there's a nanny state there. They're cosseted and so on. Mm. But that's not the case, you see. What it is is that individuals are connected with one another. Well, that makes them happy anyway. But individuals are all brought up to speed. So they have what Marcia Sen calls the essential capabilities to take charge of their own lives and develop mm. their own lives. There's no point having freedom if you have no access to the doors that mm. need to be opened, uh, if you don't have the health care, if you don't have the basic quality education and so on. So a country that, that provides all these basic services in a humane and efficient way is going to be one that makes freedom uh, broader and more accessible. So it's, it's not just anything goes, because if it's anything goes, then anything doesn't go, right? If it's, if you're, if it's too rangy and risky out there, then you'll draw back and you won't mm -hmm. really be free to venture outside the home and to walk to school or to do any of the other enlivening things that uh, make for a better life. So Th This word freedom is an interesting word, and I wonder, is it the same as autonomy? Because freedom to do anything is a freedom to do anything to heck with what anybody else thinks. But autonomy is feeling as though you have some power yourself or some ability to make decisions. Capacity, I think. Uh, the, I mean, the question is quite explicit, to make important your life decisions that you choose. So it's quite an explicit mm -hmm. question. And so then you can sort of guess what the environment would look like in order for you to give a yes answer to that. And it'd be different for different people, but on average. Yeah. Do you have other examples about uh, were experiments that have been done around that issue of freedom? So the first experiment was some Australian researchers, an unjustifiably ignored paper, uh, they had a sort of Stanford-style prison, they had a BBC-style prison, and a third-way prison, which was, in fact, they set it up so it was sort of natural for the prisoners and the guards to cooperate. And, of course, that prison turned out a lot better in its consequences. Well, that's just airy-fairy lab stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. You're not going to go to the home office in the UK or the, or the, uh, uh, the, the prison system in, in a Canadian province or federal system and say, here, <laughs> why don't you open all the doors and let everybody share the same lunchroom and see what happens. <laughs> but the Singapore prison system did something at least as adventuresome as that. They, uh, they might have read the whole playbook from well-being research, but they'd done it sort of from whatever basis, but as soon as I saw this in an international meeting, they had brought this along as an example of some innovation that had been going on in Singapore. These are 1998. They got all the people who worked in the system together and they sat down over a course of a year or more and just talked about their mission and what they thought they were doing. This is not, you're, I can see everybody groaning one more, da one more damn mission statement. Yeah. But, uh, this, is, this is a mission statement with consequence. So they, they, they had some commitment, some buy-in from the top. That This wasn't top-led, of course, it was bottom-led. But the top had to say, okay, we're serious about this. So they decided, they developed, a, they said, we're going to be... Uh, uh, a, a school to make better lives, a place where better lives are made. That's prison our mission. Prison is going to be a school a for better lives. Prison is going to be school for better lives. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether they use school from, as the noun or not, but place for better lives are made. Well, then that uh, they didn't change the way in which they ran the prison. 
they started then thinking, well, if you can make better lives, you don't want to come out of here knowing more than when you went in. You're going to want to have more social skills. You're going to have to have all kinds of skills. You're going to have to know how to deal with people. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, you might as well start in the small. But they started having all kinds of arrangements where the prisoners cooked meals and delivered them to elder care facilities and had uh, 10K runs running through, the, running through the prison with very, you know, there are a lot of collaborative things. You, you shake your head and say, how did they have enough guts to do no that? Kidding. It takes guts to do this, but they did it. And uh, then, of course, increasingly, they had the uh, uh, guards. They're not called guards. They're called prison officers. Changing the words helps, too. And uh, doing things together and, and with a lot more collaborative activities. And the prisoners helping each other. Of course, remember, that's really important to get these horizontal collaborations. And then they said, we've got to connect with the outside society. Beyond the 10K runs, they set up a yellow ribbon society, which is the idea of welcoming these people out when they come mm -hmm. out of the prison. In wow. the subsequent 10 years, uh, the recidivism rate has dropped by a third. Wow. The morale in the staff is much higher. It's much easier to recruit people. In this. So you get happiness more. And the, the, the outside community, of course, is very much happier. A, they're seeing the right thing done for everybody in the criminal justice system. Uh, of course, it's also much cheaper. But the really important point is that uh, everybody is now connected in these ways. Uh, and the people who used to come back, the ex-prisoners who used to come back as recidivists are coming back as volunteers oh to goodness. help the current prisoners. Wow. Well, that's uh, pretty impressive. On the, one of the reports I read from the prison system, they had a nice picture that showed the wall with barbed wire on top and a sort of uh, gun cage or whatever it was, a guard uh, tower at the center. And at the bottom it said, most of our guests who've checked out have no desire to return. <laughs> <laughs>